the Rebbe's response to a planned cremation. In the winter of 1982, a woman serving as the Rebbe's emissary wrote to the Rebbe that a young man had asked for her guidance. He was unable to convince his father that he should not be cremated. Here is a free translation of the Rebbe's handwritten response. Excerpt uh, dated December 20th, 1982. When speaking with someone who wants his body to be burned after death, you should answer clearly and simply. The body continues to be sustained with a kind of life even after the soul has departed. As long as the body has not completely decayed, some of the soul remains attached to it. If so, anyone who instructs or agrees to the burning of his body is effectively agreeing to burn some of his soul and act similar to burning a person alive. The distinction is that it's not all of the soul, only some of it, but it is nevertheless an unrivaled act of cruelty, even if it's his own soul that he is burning. As for his argument that many people have done this, thousands of Nazis also burned people while they were still alive in the full sense of the word. Among them scientists, doctors, merchants, family people. And also on a personal note, from me, Irvin Ferguson, uh, my dad passed away first and he was buried whole. We buried him whole, the United States Navy buried him over in Florida. Now my mother, uh, since dad had died, had met another person, Fred Goulden, and uh, they got married and, and they were both in their elder years, very, very elderly. And in a way, mom passed away and my half brothers and I, we all kind of got together and was trying to help Fred. But in a way, Fred one day comes up and says, you know, this is like just a few days afterwards saying, well, I, I had her cremated. And this was a big surprise for all of us because uh, we all knew that my mother said she did not want to be cremated back in her younger days. She did not want to be cremated. In fact, I remember my parents, you know, my dad and my mom, I'm the only one born from my dad and my mom, and uh, all my other brothers and sisters are half brothers and sisters, either by my dad or either by my mother. So I remember back in Newman, way back in the uh, middle 70s, they said, yeah, they were planning it all out. They did, neither of them wanted anything to do with cremation. Somehow that was a tradition in our family. We don't know why or where it came from or anything like that. But we did not agree to cremation. So Fred uh, had her cremated. And then what surprises me, and he's a good man. He was a good man. I helped him as best as I could. Uh, very nice man. In fact, mom had come to me and said, hey, is, you know, she wants to get married to him would it offend me or would it bother me or something to that effect and i gave her the full blessing you know go go yeah get married again so you know, no matter what i thought inside because you know hey you know there's nobody like dad and mom but a remarriage can happen so in a way i later found out that you know uh fred Goulden, he he died shortly after mom died not very long maybe a month maybe two months and so I found out later on, looking for his obit, that he was buried uh, as a Jew. And I'm thinking, obviously he wasn't an observant Jew, but uh, he was Jewish nonetheless. So that surprised me why he had mom cremated if he was a Jew. So that didn't make sense to me. But anyway, what I'm trying to get at is it's not mom's fault that she was cremated. It's Fred's fault. The blame actually lays on the next of kin who does that cremation, which is Fred. So it lands on Fred's shoulders. But anyway, that's not to say that mom won't be resurrected. She will be resurrected because it was not her fault. Thank you.